If you have your Bibles tonight, our theme for the next month or month or two months is going to be the power in prayer. Say the power, the power. In, prayer. in prayer. And I believe that we have been dealing with prayer throughout the year and it's just been infused in my life since I've gone several times to Ghana, Ghana and met with Archbishop and my son in the gospel here tonight with uh, Apostle Bishop Dexter James. Celebrate him tonight for being in the house with us. And prayer is just a central thing for all of us and my people are man ought to always to pray and not to faint so we're going to build out of that that the power in prayer the power in prayer okay track with me in these few scriptures as i try to move through this um within my time um which i think i i got at least to 10 o'clock so <laughs> The power in prayer. Um, repeat after me, turn back to God. Turn back to God. And I, I wrestled with the turn to God, turn back to God, or return to God. So I thought I'd just leave it at turn back to God. Turn back to God. And we're coming from Psalms 116 and verse 7 through 8. Psalms 116, verse 7 through 8. I'm going to pick it out of the new um, NIV, the NIV would be a better place to pull it from. And he says here in Psalms 116 and verse 7 through 8, Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my, ear, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. And all the people said, Amen. The Message Bible picks up the, what, the last part of the, one of the first part of the scripture. He says, I said to myself in, in Psalms 116 and verse 7, the Message Bible, I said to myself, relax, rest. God has shown you, God has showered you with blessings. Relax and rest. Because God has showered you with blessings. Return to the Lord or return to God. Uh, note, if you're writing this down, put a big G for God, Amen. not a little G. Isaiah 43 and 11 through 12 says it like this. He says, I even, I am the Lord, and apart from me, there is no Savior. Isaiah 43, verse 11. Verse 12 goes on. He says, I have revealed, I have revi I revealed and saved and proclaimed, I am not some foreign God. I am not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. You will proclaim that I'm God if nobody else proclaim that I'm God. You will know for sure. Uh, that's why I got this shirt on tonight. <laughs> that God did it. Amen? That God is the one that brought me through this. He goes on to now return to the Lord, he says, or come back to God. And return here is seen very sweetly in Matthew's Gospel, the 11th chapter, in verse 28 through 29 in NIV. He says, come to me, Matthew's 11, 28. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. So when you turn to God, you find rest. He's meek and lowly. You'll find rest for your souls. Saints should not be antsy and nervous and taking all kind of nervous energy and nervous uh, things to unwrap, to get you calmed down. Your rest should be in the, in the knowing that God is in control. You should not let the devil bully you with fear and anxiety and stress. You come to the person that can give you rest. Coming back to God, you find rest. The rest is in Jesus Christ, is in, in the Holy Spirit. We come to him, and in that spirit, there is rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. You should find rest for your soul. This the first recording of this uh, thought of heavy laden is here in Matthew's Gospel. It talks about heavy laden, one that's carrying a heavy load. I don't know about you, but stressed out people make me nervous. I was on an airplane flying one time. The guy was just sitting there. He kept just, just jumping and scratching. I said, man, listen, let me pray for you. You know, you're, waiting, you're, you're, you're responding to turbulence that haven't happened yet. 
you, you, you get nervous and he's, he said, I'm afraid of flying. And why did you get on the plane? If you're afraid of traveling on the airplane, you took the train or the bus. But here you're on the plane and you want to make my flight nervous. If you get around nervous people, they'll start making you nervous. Before you know it, you have the same discomfort. And as it becomes a laboring, a heavy ladenness that you cannot get rid of, it becomes a load that you carry, overburdened by life's circumstances. Turn to God. And the same thing he speaks up here of being it, make, making it difficult to carry in a heavy load. It's just sometimes too much to bear and the circumstances too overwhelming to carry. This context of Matthew's gospel was speaking also to the Pharisees because the Bible says that they were the ones that were causing more heavy burdens, a load for people to carry. Adding more load or law to them in this case. And he says in Matthew 23 and 4, he said it was heavy burdens. Matthew 23 and 4, it was heavy burdens if they bore upon the people's shoulders that they themselves, watch this, they themselves would not move with one finger. I grew up in the church that people I thought that was really righteous and saved, they were struggling. I said, I grew up in the church that the people <laughs> was the one that made me feel like I wasn't that saved yet. I, I haven't come overcome. It's like, well, you, you're still overcoming. Because of all, of all the sins they would not do, they had one sin, so a couple of sins they could not get rid of, which was anger and unforgiveness. Because I would see them walk past people when the pastor asked them to speak to everybody, and I ain't speaking to her. Now, how much does she owe you? You can't speak to her. That, and she's not giving it back, so couldn't overcome the smallest things. Amen. Some of you are still struggling for what them kids did to you, and you're trying to see how you can just be forgiven from that and get that stress off your mind because you really want to just punch them dead in the throat because right now I, I want to just get this thing off of me. Heavy burdens. Rest is noted in the Matthew's Gospel in the 11th chapter. Rest is noted twice in the context. Jesus is speaking here about rest for your soul and rest from the burdens of sin and the burdens for being under the law. God has told his people to come to him in Isaiah 48, but they would not come. They would either stay wearied and in worn depression instead of coming to God and find quietness and peace. I'm going to drop a little nugget in here and then I'm going to get off the street quickly. Somebody holler rest at me. I'm going to holler chill out. Chill out. Don't trip. I'm sorry. Um, it's just Rest. Come to me and you can find rest. Mental illness is very real. It takes over your emotions, your actions, and your mood swing. And it often impacts your day-to-day -day life and your relationship. How was your day? Don't ask me. Okay. The next day you come in, why aren't you speaking? Because I asked you the other day, how was your day? And you told me, don't ask you. So I thought I better not go down that road again. So I just wave. <laughs> it affects your relationship, not mental illness, just mood swings. And it causes problems in the workplace, in the home, and also in your social settings and in the church. More than one in five Amer adults live with mental illness. Don't start counting on your road. Don't do that. Don't do this. Keep looking forward. And don't count me. That's number five. One in five. True statement. True coming. And, and there, is no, there is no health without mental health. You want to get better, but you have to get better in transforming of your mind first. Turn to God. Are you with me? Got to work on that first, you know. And all the things you think you're going to take, they're going to balance you out. They're only going to just keep you more addicted to what you think is balancing you out. And you, you go through your own medicine cabinet. There's no mental health without, there's no health without mental health in every course of, in a course of a lifetime. Not all people will experience mental illness. I'm not a doctor. I'm saying that a part of my reading. I'm not a therapist. I'm not. But we all have to understand that there are problems that we have and medicine is a miracle that can fix some of those problems yes y'all looking at me like where is he going with that <laughs> i understand that there are certain medicine people need to take because of what they've ex the trauma they've experienced and, and the life experience they had to go through but i believe that the best rest you can find is in jesus 
not excluding if you need more professional help. <laughs> but you still need rest in Jesus. Because there's some things only Jesus can fix. In the Holy Ghost, there is, in the Holy Spirit, there is love, joy, and peace. No absence of the storm. The storm's going to be there. But you find peace in the midst of the storm. Turning back to God. Are you still tracking with me? Okay, let's go to the text and I can put it back in the picture. Psalms 116 verse 1. Love the Lord for he heard my voice. I love the Lord because he heard my voice. Psalms 116 verse 1. He heard my cry from, for mercy. That's why I love the Lord. He heard me. Loving the Lord is, 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 is a wonderful thing. It's the first response we should do because he heard our cry. And we should love the Lord. The results of God's intervening into our cry. So we love him. Loving the Lord is the first, one of the first and greatest commandment, and the second is likened unto it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Psalms of Matthew 22, verse 37, 38, 39. Love the Lord. Say, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Easy to say, I love the Lord, when I can also, if, if, it's, it's easier to say, I love the Lord, but it's harder to avoid the other part of the equation that I have to love my neighbor as myself. So if I say, I love the Lord, that means that I love my neighbor also. Mm -hmm. One is, no one is greater than the other. He said it grows out of that. My relationship of loving God grows out of a relationship of loving God and loving other people. I find a willingness to love God. And loving God is easy. Loving people sometimes is difficult. I know, mental illness. But nevertheless, I love them because God first loved me. Turn to God. Love people. It's found in the willingness of loving God. Love is not just what God does. Love is who God is. For God is love and in him is no darkness at all. First John 4 and 8 speaks about whosoever does not love, does not love, does not know God because God is love. And if you love God, you, you have his DNA. If you have his DNA, he's your father. If you have his father, you're going to act like your father. And if you act like your father, you're going to love. And you're going to show love one to another. Turn to God. Turn to God. Jesus makes this commandment hooked on to the second, love your neighbor as yourself. So the psalmist says in 116, I love the Lord because he heard my cry. For mercy is sending a perfect thank you back to Jesus when he says, I love the Lord. It's sending back a perfect praise saying, I thank you because you heard my cry. The psalmist in his highest joy he sees his prayer answered for life tragedies, cir tragic circumstances. He sees them in Psalm 116 of his prayer being answered of life's tragic circumstances in verse 3 and verse 8. Watch verse 3. The courts of death entangled me. Psalms 116 and verse 3. The courts of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. So you can't stop me from loving God. For him to, in 116, in verse 3, Captain, I'm reading a new NIV translation. The courts of death had entangled me. Courts, saints, are, are binding. Entanglements uh, are, are, have a place of not giving a way of release. But God came and took the binding cords and the entanglement that we entangled ourselves in and unraveled them and got us out. So loving God is the first thing I should do. And loving my sister and brother sitting around me because you didn't get out by yourself. If I came out by God untangling me and my mind, then you had to get out by God entangling you. Let me wake the class up a little bit and say, I don't know what it was, but God got you out of it. Whatever it was, whatever it was, whatever it was. He unraveled that thing completely. The Bible speaks in Exodus, the 14th chapter, watch this in verse 3. Pharaoh said that God's people were entangled in the land and the wilderness had shut them in. That's how he saw us in our life circumstance. Pharaoh would think that this was no way they were going to get out. They were confused. They were trapped in the wilderness. But God brought me out. Even though the wilderness was shutting in on me, God says, I'll show you the way out. He's blessed and he's wonderful and he's amazing. 
The servants will only understand how grateful it is when God entangles and also delivers and brings the trap to an end. The psalmist says the anguish or the extreme pain of this distress and this anxiety was like a grave coming over me. Feeling like I was being buried alive. Turn to God. It was so overwhelming and so pressuring that it was as if dirt was being thrown in on me. Some friends are good to pull you out. Other friends wants to see you have a committal. But Jesus says this is going to be a resurrection. Because I'm going to pull you up out of that thing. He said completely overwhelmed with sorrow, moving to a nervous breakdown. But God said you're about to break through. Amen. Turn to God. Turn to God. Verse 8, Psalms 116 in NIV. He says, the Lord have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I want to run around the room. God delivers from death, Lauren, when death is the strongest thing that says, I got you. And God says, I'm going to deliver you from death. And I'm going to stop your eyes from tears and your feet from falling. I'm going to make sure you make it out this time better than you did last time. And you're going to know for sure how to love the Lord. Is anybody in it tonight know that God has delivered <laughs> and stopped those tears from falling down your face and raveled things that you got yourself entangled in? I'm not going to read the other scriptures, but look at Psalms 94 and verse 19, 94, 19, and 94, 7, and 8. He says in 94, Psalms 7, 17 and 18, unless the Lord had helped me, I would have soon have settled in silence of the grave. I cried out, I am slipping, but your unfailing love, oh Lord, supported me. Even at the point of slipping into dark, slipping, God says, I'm going to make sure that my unfailing love is going to rescue and pull you out. Isn't he amazing? The psalmist is leading us to what Paul would say to us in the next five minutes, and I think I'll be done. He's going down in Psalms 116 about turn to God, and he's bringing us to verse 10. Verse 10 is the pivoting point of the lesson, and I I can get through this in the next five minutes. He says, I believe, therefore have I spoken. I am greatly afflicted. New King James Version. NIV, I trusted in the Lord when I said I am greatly afflicted. I trusted in to God. I turned to God. I'm sorry. Psalm 116, I turned to God. Turn to God. I believe there was still faith and hope in what I was going through. I believe there was not going to be the end in all of me. So I turned to God. And I spoke what I didn't see happening yet, but I turned to God. I believe, and therefore I spoke it. I was greatly afflicted, so I just spoke it. I'm going back to God. Paul picks this up in 2 Corinthians, the second, second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, doing his near-death experience, and he begins to talk about it in, in this context. He says, I believe, therefore have I spoken. 2 Corinthians 4, Paul begins to say the same things. I believe, therefore have I spoken. Paul applied the word to, his, and, and to faith and put that word out in front and said, I believe. Somebody say, I believe. I believe. Say, I believe. I believe. Say, I believe. I believe. Then you have to speak that constantly over whatever the enemy is trying to drown you in and take you out with. Say, I believe. Near death experience at death doors because life can give you many circumstances. But keep speaking that prophetic word, I believe. I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm delivered. I believe I will come. I believe I have power. I believe I'm coming back. I believe this is not the end all of me, I believe. Therefore, have I spoken to God if to every circumstance, wherever you're going through, he knows how to handle it. And he can handle it better than anybody else. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 12, 13, and 14. 2 Corinthians 4, 12, 13, 14. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal bodies. Paul has said, if you, you're going through something, but you're dying to yourself and coming alive to Christ. I can't really see 
what's in the can until I open the can. So I got to put the pressure on the can to open the can to see what's in the can. I can't really believe you're going to bless me at all times until I put you through some all times to see what's going to happen and going to come out of your mouth. So for you to say that I'm going to praise God or get through this, then I'm going to put you through something and see whether or not you really mean what you say. So death is working, but life is being revealed in your mortal body. A good test will give you a better praise. A good trial will give you a better thank you, Jesus. <laughs> a good financial hardship will make you come in and just clap over two dollars. But Lord, I thank you. At least I got two. The audacity, someone told me the other day, they said I was embarrassed getting in the line and I had this food stamp card. I said, a card? I remember tearing the papers out real so. And the line behind the people were saying, he ain't got enough money. I, said, I, I didn't go to the store for myself. They sent me to the store. And I'm ripping these little papers out the book. Um, let me, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. So I'm ripping these papers out the book. And it's like, people behind me said, get him out the line. It's going to be a long time because he don't have enough food stamp. I can see the size of the book. He ain't got enough. But here you are up in front with a, with a, with a credit card. All they got to do is just wave it. I've never seen one before, but, I, but it's still a card. A T card. So then death is working, Paul said, in us. We're dying in something. But life is working in you. Yes. Paul, what are you talking about? He says, I'm going through something. I'm at the point of my death, but I believe it's not my funeral. And you see me going through it, and you begin to talk one way. But when you see me coming out of it, you see life in it. Because you see that I didn't believe if anybody would have made it out of that, they would have never made it out of that. But death is working in me. But life is working in you. Your friend is going through a horrible test. And you're getting life because you're on the good side, on the other side right now. But you look back at her test and said, if God brought her out of it, then surely he's going to bring me out of it. So your dying is giving me hope. You raising children is telling me that maybe I can have a family someday. Because if you can do it, I'm getting life out of what you go through. I'm getting excited about what's happening in your life. I believe, therefore, have I spoken. Since I have not, since we have, Paul said, the same spirit of faith, we also believe, therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised Jesus from the dead will raise us up also, and we'll be in his presence. If he brought Jesus up, he's going to bring us up. Don't stop believing. Thank you, Jonathan Cain. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. Don't stop speaking the faith. Turn to God. What the Lord promised, he will do. Paul here now enlarges upon turning to God. In 2 Corinthians 10 and 11, he goes on. He said that out of power and through my weaknesses will come power. Where the infirmities that I'm going through, power will be displayed. We have this treasure in these jars and earthen vessels, and we understand the superior power within these vessels is not of us, but it's of God. Hard pressed on every side, not crushed. Perplexities, not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Abandoned, but not struck down. He says, we're always bouncing back. Nothing better than seeing a bounce back believer. And there's nothing more beautiful than see a saint just say, I'm coming back. I'm getting over this. I'm getting up, but I'm going forward because I have the ability to bounce back. Faith that strengthens and the power of God, even tonight, I decree and I declare somebody is getting their strength back. Somebody's getting back up on their feet. Somebody is saying that this is not going to be how the story is going to end. God is doing something amazing and wonderful in my life. Paul goes on, church. I got to close it because I see my time. He says, 2 Corinthians 11, he goes through this list of things that he's gone through. And out of all these things, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 23 down to 33, Paul talks about a laundry list of things he's gone through, stripes and beatings and, 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 and being abandoned and being betrayed, all of these things, imminent penalty places of death and going back and forth being sold. Paul goes on to this list of Damascus. They tried to kill me, but my attention was on God. My hope was in God. My trust was in God. Paul, like the psalmist says, I believe, therefore have I spoken. I'm not going to not stop speaking what God has given me to speak. I can rely on God. I can depend on God. What shall I render to the Lord because of his goodness to me? I'll take the cup of salvation. I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I owe you a debt I cannot pay. 
I will serve you with every fiber of my being. With every bit of strength that I have left, I'll give my blast to you. I'll give it all to you because you pulled me out when nobody else could get me out. I was in distress. I was at the point of death. I had nothing else to do. You turned my mourning into dancing. I shook off what I put on my own self and you are the one that I give praise and thanks to. You turn my darkness into light. So today I say thank you. If it's a 10 million to 10 million times, it's not enough for me to say thank you. Turn back to God. Lord has been my help. He has been my deliverer. He has delivered me from death my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I would walk before the Lord in the land of the living. This death was not the death for me to go to heaven. This death was the death for me to live right down here and walk around in the land of the living. You thought it was over, it was just the beginning. What God does, no nobody else can do I feel preach coming on what God does nobody else could do I didn't come in here tonight on a crippling stick or in a wheelchair maybe some did I walked in here under the power of my own ability and strength and you gonna tell me don't love God don't go to God don't thank God baby girl you should have seen what he unraveled me out of what he entangled me out of what he brought me through yeah turn to God and guess what there is neither death nor life principalities are power things present are things to come nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved me this is the best decision I made in my whole life when I turned to Come on, hold your hands up. Father, I bless you. I'm reaching to your reach. I'm speaking to your moment. Someone is at that edge, but you're right there as you caught Peter. But you need them to say, save me. Grab me. Don't let me go under another time. Thank you for the witnesses, not only in Hebrew, but Hebrews book and chapter of the Hall of Fame, but even in this house, even in my world, I'm walking past people that are living epistles. They're not telling the story, but I read the book tonight in Psalms 116. You have delivered from death, eyes from tears, feet from stumbling my God for the next five seconds get in your view of that thing that God wouldn't let you walk into that thing that God directed you around he says no I'm not going to let you go through that you may not make it back says I'm going to order your steps and put you right where I need you just so you know the Lord has helped me through this thank you for keeping my mind stayed on you keeping my mind focused on you Thank you. Reach up as high as you can and say, Lord, I thank you. And I owe you the praise. I owe you the glory. And I owe you the honor. In Jesus' name, amen.